We're going to configure LDAP for web-based authentication using Zone Director and Windows Server 2012 R2. Before we start, let's cover an introduction, go over a couple things real quick. First, LDAP, it stands for Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. It's based on the DAP X.500 Directory Services Protocol. It was written and based off of that. Now, it's used to enable organizations, individuals, to be able to locate and find files and devices on the network or other attributes. A really good way to think about this is when you sit down at your Windows machine at the office and you log in. When you log in through Windows to a domain controller, essentially you're using, in most cases, LDAP is the authentication method. Now, when we talk about LDAP authentication for web-based authentication, what we're really doing in this example, there's some things that we need to understand. Now, this falls outside of the Windows to LDAP authentication piece. What we're really talking about here is when we have a supplicant, an authenticator, and an authentication server. So the supplicant is the client device. This could be a smartphone, a tablet, it could be your desktop, but we also have an authenticator, and the authenticator in most cases is the controller, sometimes it can be the access point, sometimes it can be the ICX switch. In this example, the authenticator is Zone Director. And then we have an authentication server. This is a AAA compliant device, and AAA stands for authentication authorization and accounting just for reference we have some prerequisites we're going to cover real quick mainly ldap the active directory service the nps service or network policy server needs to be installed within windows server 2012 r2 the last piece we really need to ensure this before we start but zone director needs to have connectivity to the ldap server or in our example the windows server 2012 and vice versa they need to be able to talk to each other so you really have to pay attention to your firewall rules filtering anything else that can hinder that kind of traffic i want to give you just one point of reference because we're not going to create the user of the group but from server manager if you go to tools and you go down to active directory users and computers on the left hand side in the tree you can see a users folder this is where you can create users and groups here we have a group and a user the group is zd labs and the user is zd lab that's the user and group we will use for this demonstration we're going to start out in the network policy server. This can be found from server manager by going to tools and then selecting network policy server. All right, we need to build a radius client. So we're going to go to radius clients in the tree Then we'll click on configure radius clients. From there, we're going to go back up into the tree. We're going to right click where we see radius clients and we're going to select new. Okay, we've configured a friendly name of ZD LDAP. This is just for reference. We've also given it an IP address. This is the IP address of our zone director controller. Next, we gave it a shared secret. We need to remember this shared secret. We're gonna have to apply this in the zone director configuration later. So now we'll click on okay. Before we continue, we need to identify the admin and base domain name. Zone director is gonna require these when we configure LDAP on that side. So we'll go to start and then we can go to search and just look for ldp.exe and we'll execute that. Then we're gonna to go to connection and click on connect. We're gonna input the IP address of our domain controller. We'll click on okay. Now I'm gonna expand this window just to make it a little bit easier. We're gonna to go to connection and we're gonna click on bind. We need to bind as the administrator or somebody with domain privileges. In this case, we're logged in as administrator, so we're gonna bind as that currently logged on user and then click on okay. All right, it takes some digging, or you can use the search function, but we went ahead and found the SAM account name of administrator. And what we see here is bolded up top our domain name. That's going to be our admin domain. If we go down a little bit further, we can see that we have a distinguished name. That's actually our base domain name. So we have the information now that we need, and that should get us started with configuring zone director. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this stuff out and put it on the clipboard, make it easier to configure zone director later. But as you can see a pop-up here, this is going to show you exactly the information that we need and how we were able to correlate that from the output in this file. We're in Zone Director now, so what we need to do is we need to create an LDAP AAA entry, and we do that by navigating to Services and Profiles and AAA Servers. Remember, this Zone Director is our authenticator, so he's going to handle authentication traffic between itself and the LDAP server for .1x. So we'll click on Create, and now we're going to give it a name. We'll call it LDAP, and then we'll select the LDAP radio button. The rest of this has all been populated. We have an IP address. We also have the base domain and the admin domain that we located earlier. We've included the admin password, and also under base domain name, we've included the SAM account name that we found earlier. 
great. I'm happy with all of this. It looks great. It's exactly what we need. So we're going to click on OK. Now what we're doing is we're just going to run a test on the username and password. And this is what we created in our LDAP server. We can see that it's successful. That's good news. So the next piece, we need to create a wireless LAN. Navigate over to wireless LANs here. And we're going to click on Create. Now we're going to give it a name. For this example, let's just call it LDAP WLAN. That's pretty easy. The usage type, we're going to keep that at standard usage. Authentication, we're going to leave that open and we're going to enable the web authentication. So Captive Portal Web Auth, we're going to enable that. For authentication server, we're going to select in the drop down list, we're going to grab our LDAP server that we configured earlier. Encryption, we'll leave that blank. Now, this next piece, I'm just going to expand down the advanced options. I want you to see here that if you need to assign any other type of attributes to this client, you can. You can add a VLAN or any other attributes that you require. Let's test it. So, we got our wireless networks open here. We're going to go down to LDAP WLAN and select that. Now, if you don't get a pop up here right away, you can go to a non HTTPS site like www.example.com. However, we get a pop up, so we'll click continue. Now, we're going to enter the username and password that we created in LDAP, so ZDLab the password and we'll click on login. Now it's authenticating us and we've authenticated. Great. That's exactly what we wanted to have happen. We see a success message. So the next piece, we're just going to go up to the address bar and see if we can hit google.com and we can. Awesome. Now the last piece, we're going to jump back into zone director. I want to go in and show you the client and its authenticated status and then we'll wrap it up. In the zone director dashboard, we're just going to go to clients and then wireless clients. Now we can see the client that we've authenticated with. This is the same one. I know that it's my laptop. Everything looks great. You can see some great information in here. You can scroll to the right. We see that the status is authorized. Auth method is web. And that's it. You've configured LDAP for authentication with zone director. Check the description box below for great resources located on the Ruckus support portal. There you can find KB articles, documentation, videos, and more. Thanks for watching.